If you or someone you know has diabetes, you may have built up an excess supply of test strips and lancets. That's where we come in. We'll buy the supplies that you don't need and resell them to those in need to prevent waste. Help us make diabetes management more affordable. Visit us at teststripswithaz.com. All right, we have Brent Premis on the show. He returns to action February 22nd in the co-main event of Bellator Dublin. He's going to take on Chris Bungard at that event. Brent, how are you, man? I'm doing good. Like I said, I'm definitely sore, tired, and hungry, but uh, I'm doing good. Ah, perfect timing for this interview. You're in the best mood possible, I bet. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> Big fight coming up in around three weeks' time, Brent. How has uh, the camp been going thus far as you get ready to make your return to the Bellator cage for the first time in 2020? My camp has been excellent. You know, I feel really, really good. Uh, I feel fast, strong. My weight is good. Uh, my cardio is good. <clears throat> my stand-up feels excellent. I've probably dropped more people in this fight camp than I have in my last five or six fight camps. And, uh, man, I, I feel really sharp, and I, I'm ready. I know you're originally scheduled to fight Peter Queeley on this card, and he had to withdraw due to an injury. Now you get Chris Bungard. I assume not much is going to change in terms of your approach to this fight? Yeah, not much, man. Uh I feel like I got this Chris guy on the feet, on the ground, on my wrestling. I feel like I'm better than than in in any aspect of MMA. So, um, yeah, man, whatever. uh, I'm just going to go out there and fight, and uh, I know I'm going to come up with a victory for sure. When did you find out about the switch? I think probably two, three days ago. Not, not, I mean, I just kind of found out or whatever, and I really haven't even looked up too much about Chris. Uh, I'm kind of leaving that to my coaches, but you know, next couple of days I'll probably go on YouTube and check out a couple of his things or whatever. I don't like to look up too much stuff and gets kind of my head, so I let my coaches mainly do all that. But um, yeah, same, same, different opponent, same goal. You know, I'm gonna go out there and smash this guy. Same thing. So the last time we had spoken, the rematch with Michael Chandler was was all but done for Bellator 212. Like you knew the fight was going to happen, you're just waiting on a date, and that was your first fight since winning the belt at MSG. And I know you had some bad feelings towards Chandler, and that you know the fight didn't really go the way you had, had hoped for. But what were you able to at least take away from that fight and that experience after being out of action for a year and a half? Man, I learned a lot about that fight. I uh, I think the main thing was. I should I have to be able to switch game plans on a dime. Like if uh, my game plan isn't working, then I just need to be able to switch it. And, and I'm so stubborn, and I kept on with the same thing. And and I I was submitting everybody off my back the whole fight camp. And I knew I I, I could submit Chandler eventually if I just be patient. And uh, you know that didn't work out well. But there was also a few things that happened in that fight that you know I haven't really told too many people about. But like um, you know I did get headbutted in the first round. I I, I was rocked. I couldn't. I was in like in cloud nine. I don't remember thinking at all. And so that was definitely a weird thing, man. The human brain is, is nuts. And then, uh, yeah, a couple other things, but it's all good, man. I, I, I'm really excited. Hopefully I can fight Chandler soon. You know, I'm really wanting Vincent Henderson or Chandler or, or, or Patricio, obviously, but, uh, um, yeah, man, uh, it was a good learning experience. I learned a lot for sure. Do you look at Chandler a little bit differently now after sharing 25 minutes with him, or do you still sort of have the, that bad taste in your mouth? Um, I don't like him. I don't think he's a good guy. I think he's uh, a poor sport. I think he lies and he's a uh, he's a little punk, you know. So I don't like him at all, and he's just a little shit talker. But uh, I just want that rematch, man. I know I can beat him. I know I can knock him out. My, I just want that fight again, man. I I really want to fight Chandler again for sure. You bounced back in a nice way with one of the best submissions of 2019. That nasty Gogo Plata over Tim Wilde in Birmingham is beautiful, oh, yeah. and to me. I didn't think that submission got the love it deserved, if we're being honest. Like, there were some great submissions last year, but I felt like yours should have been ranked a little bit higher on all those year-end lists. Do you, I mean, do you watch that stuff? Do you care about that stuff at all? Yeah, I'm not too concerned with that. Obviously, it would have been cool to win submission of the year, whatever that is, but um, it's all good, man. I, uh, I actually got a couple cool submissions that are a little bit more rare than the Gogo Plata that I've been busting on people a lot, and it's pretty cool. So hopefully I can bust out one of those uh, here coming soon. Are we going to see a twister out of you this year? I mean, that was that ended up winning on, on most people's lists. I definitely have, uh, you know, I've been, I've, I've caught a couple of people on twisters lately, but I've been working, I got so many setups off of, of my uh, off my back, and I'm just going to keep it a surprise, but hopefully I'll be able to catch it with this Chris guy, man. I've been catching a lot of people with it, and it's, uh, it's a cool submission for sure. 
definitely something to look forward to. Physically, how are you feeling these days? Because it's got to be nice to be a bit more active. This is going to be your third fight in around 14 months time, which is a refreshing change of pace from the last few years, is it not? Yeah. Um, yeah, man, I, uh, <laughs> I would, I've been asking Bellator for at least two to three fights a year. And um, I haven't really been getting that as much as I want. But this year, I, I talked to a manager, and, and they talked to Bellator, and hopefully, I'm praying, man, I get three fights this year, and I want to stay active as possible, for sure. I feel better, and I feel, just feel um, my fight IQ, and, and I just feel more confident when, I, when I'm fighting in, uh, in the gym and, and everything, so hopefully, I'll get three fights this year, for sure. I saw that you welcomed a second child into the world in September. I, I believe it was September. And we've spoken in the past about how amazing fatherhood is and also how chaotic it can be, trying to keep it real here for those who, you know, have visions of being a parent in the future. But, you know, how is life these days with a, with a second child in the house? It's a blessing, man. It's awesome. <clears throat> but at the same time, it's way harder than one kid. <laughs> you know, two kids <laughs> is way harder. I, I, it is for sure. But um we got lucky with a beautiful little girl who's so happy she's happy all the time smiles like you just look at her she just starts start smiling she's pretty funny but uh we definitely got lucky with a really good happy baby and um but yeah man everything is uh going great man I, after i'm training hard all day long there's nothing like coming home to my family and my little kids and it's definitely a a, a blessing for sure so you got the boy now you got the girl. Is it different? Like I know the the love that you give is the same, but the mentality of a father having a daughter, it's got to be a little bit different, right? Like your protective state of mind is probably on overdrive, is it not? Yeah, for sure. Especially when she, uh, you know, starts getting a little bit older, and um, yeah, man, she's my little girl. You know, I got to protect her and and keep her safe, and she's a lot more fragile. I feel, and she's actually. <laughs> She's like in the 90 cent percentile and like everything. She's a big chunk. She's like a big, big fat baby. And uh, she's like twice the size of my little boy when he was uh, that age, you know. So, um, but yeah, man, it's, uh, I'm, I, I truly feel blessed having a boy and a girl. It's, uh, it, it is it is different, you know. I mean, obviously I love them so much the same, but um, it's definitely different having a boy and a girl. Are we going to do any more or is, is two it? <laughs> no, I think we're done. I think we're done. <laughs> <laughs> when I was younger, I wanted three, but now that I have two, I think I'm good. Uh, you know, if one r r runs the other way and, and one's crying, you know, there's one for each of them. But if there's three, I think we'd be outnumbered and it could get a little hectic. <laughs> that's a, yeah, that's a great way to look at it. That that photo you posted on Instagram with the kid sitting on Santa's lap is so oh, funny, yeah. dude. Like your son is <laughs> screaming bloody murder and your daughter yeah. is looking at him like, come on, bro. Like that's <laughs> that's got to be one for the scrapbooks forever. I'm I'm assuming. Exactly, exactly. What are you doing, big brother? You little weenie, come on. It's so funny. So February 22nd, you're back at it. You're coming off an impressive win, one of the best submissions of the year. A lot to motivate you, obviously, here. How do you see this all going down? How do you kick off 2020 in the best possible way? Man, I'm uh, I, i going to win. I mean, I'm going to go out there and kick some butt. Uh, that's what I do. I'll, uh, I'm going to put my life on the line, and, and I'm ready for a crazy war. I've been training so freaking hard, and um, – it's going to be different now, though. You know, I was fighting Peter Queeley, and he's a big, big name, and and he has a lot of fans in Ireland, and, and the Irish fans, I honestly don't think there's any fans like the Irish fans. And so uh, I was expecting a crazy, crazy – I was expecting crazy crap from the fans. And I, as soon as they announced me fighting Peter Queeley, I was getting messages every week from people from, I, from Ireland telling me that uh, I'm a dead mate and they're going to kill me and, like, all this stuff, you know, like – and uh, so I was like, oh, yeah, these, these Irish fans are no joke, you know. So I definitely think it's going to be not as intense now that I'm fighting uh, Chris from uh, Scotland or whatever. But um, I, I feel like the atmosphere is going to be awesome out there. And um, I, I can't wait, man. It's going to be really exciting. But uh, I'm going to stay focused and, and see my game plan. And like I said, man, I feel like I'm better than this guy in every aspect of MMA. So I'm going to go out there and show it. What was the craziest message you got? Um... I mean, all of them were pretty much just like, you don't know what you got yourself into. We're going to kill you, mate, uh, and stuff like that. But the funny thing is, is uh, I would message everybody back, and I'm, I'm always trying to be respectful. And I was like, oh, yeah, you know, I'm training hard. We'll see what happens. Um, and a lot of the guys, I would like, let's make it get a drink afterwards. You know, I'm, I'm, I like whiskey. And uh, a lot of them like, ah, oh, screw it, mate. Win or lose, we'll get some drinks together afterwards. <laughs> I'm like, all right, cool. So uh, half of them seem like cool afterwards or whatever, but there's definitely a few of them that, uh, that said that uh, I'm in for some trouble over there. Are you enjoying all this world travel and stamping that passport from Birmingham? Now you're going to Dublin. Are you enjoying this part of it? 
yeah, that's what life's about, man. Uh, experiencing the, the travels and everything like that. The only thing I don't like um, is it, it's really hard for me to get used to the time time change sometimes and, and sleeping and, and stuff like that. And it is a little bit more expensive when I fly when I fight out of country with my family going and, and, and all that stuff and cornermen and, and everything. But um, I think this is what life's about, man. Experience uh, traveling and, and everything. And uh, it's cool, man. Last time when I was in England, I fought there and I, I had a blast. Everybody was so polite to me. Like everybody from England is, is really nice. And, and I had a, a blast. And after the fight, we went back to the, you know, I think the all of Bellator and everybody went to the hotel, the big bar and, and everybody got me smashed. I couldn't even, I mean, I blocked out. People were buying me shots left and right. And uh, it was just a, a cool time, man. So I'm hoping it's going to be kind of similar to uh, Ireland. Right before I got out with you, I was watching a video that you posted on social media a couple weeks ago, and you're working on your head movement, and it looks like your coach is swinging a bunch of taped up towels at you. He's almost like pool cueing a punching bag at you. Maybe it was a golf club or something. Like, what is that, and how long has that been a part of your regimen? Because that's super fun to watch, man. Yeah, that's my conditioning coach. He's a man. Like, he not only just works on speed and strength, but he works my mind and, and agility and he, he hand coordination and footwork and he, he's awesome man and uh yeah he, he taped like a boxing glove to an end of a, a long pole and just like you know tries to hit me with it and, and i dodge and move and then he got yeah he, he got these towels and wrapped them in duct tape and uh does the same thing really just helps me work my head movement and my footwork and and uh and all that but uh yeah man it's good stuff and i, I got an awesome conditioning coach for sure if we're having this conversation at the end of the year, and I know we're not looking past February 22nd by any means, in your 2020 vision at this point, like what are we talking about here? At the end of the year? Yeah. Man, I hope uh, my last fight or, or I'm fighting Patricio or, or somebody for the belt or uh, – man, I, I was really wanting Benton Henderson. That's who I was been wanting for a while now and and um, or at least one of the top guys um, – but uh, at the end of the year, man, I, I'm really hoping that <clears throat> I have another title shot, or at least I'm fighting one of the you know the top guys for sure. If you, all goes well here, and Bellator calls you and says Chandler Henderson or the belt, what are you going with? Who? Uh, I mean, I think I'd be dumb to say no to the belt right now. I mean, that's the belt. That's what everybody's uh, the goals are. The aim is for the, the belt, you know. And uh, so I think I'd be pretty dumb to say no to that. So definitely the belt, man. I want that belt for sure. And, and I think if I get that belt, then it's just a matter of time before I fight Benson or uh, Michael, you know? So I think that uh, that belt will give me all of those. And Josh Thompson just officially announced his retirement. Yeah. Yeah. Josh is the man, dude. He's uh he has nothing to prove. You know, he's, he's done it all and he's been whooping some butt and um, you know, hats off to him. He's a good man and a, a good fighter and uh, he deserves his retirement and, and all the good things are happening to him. I feel. Brent Permis returns to action against Chris Bungard in the co-main event of Bellator Dublin, February 22nd on the Paramount Network. And by the way, Brent, and I don't know how much sway or pull you have with the Bellator brass, but this tape delay thing, can we do something about this in 2020? I mean, come on oh, now. Yeah, no kidding, man. <laughs> Jeez, it's, it's frustrating. It is, you know. Um, yeah, yeah. Hopefully uh, we'll get that figured out here soon. <laughs> yeah, but I appreciate the time as always, Brent. Before I let you go, let the folks know where they can find you on the web, social media, any other shout outs, anything else you want to get off your chest, the floor is yours. Yeah, uh, check me out on Instagram at Brent Primus 155. And uh, yeah, stay tuned in Ireland, February 22nd. I'm going to go out there and make a statement and uh, I'm definitely going to finish this guy. Thank you, Brent. All the best to you on February 22nd, man. Enjoy Dublin. Thank you. Appreciate it.